Hi, I'm Hamil Hussein. I'm a staff machine learning engineer at GitHub, and I'm joined by Rock, who is a uh, engineer at Sourcegraph. And today we're going to be talking about code snippet search. But first, I want to talk about Code SearchNet, which is what powers Code Snippet Search and a number of other projects as as a way of introduction. So. First, I want to talk about what Code Search Net is. So, Code Search Net is a project released by GitHub, a set of data and models that are meant to pow uh, meant for researchers to use for various artificial intelligence and machine learning research tasks. <clears throat> now, in popular culture, you might think of artificial intelligence in in uh, these ways. Um, so, things that people are familiar with are self-driving cars, winning games like AlphaGo, um, mundane things like text message completion when you're on your phone, and even other things such as winning Jeopardy. These are all things that have been popularized in, in the media as a, a lately uh, as far as things that artificial intelligence can do. However, there's another side to artificial intelligence. There's a side of it that can help everyday people do their jobs and especially skilled labor. So what do I mean by that? So for example, radiologists. We see artificial intelligence helping radiologists zone in on potential areas where there might be a disease or a diagnosis that needs to be made. Oops, I went to the wrong slide. Um, and you see here that there's a heat map where the artificial intelligence algorithm has highlighted for the radiologist points of interest that they might want to pay more attention to. And what this does, it doesn't replace the radiologist, it augments the radiologist, and it helps make them more effective at what they're doing. Similarly, um, we see artificial intelligence augmenting writers. So this is a very popular tool called Grammarly. You may have used it. And not only does it help you with spell checking, but it helps you with more nuanced type of things like engagement and uh, grammar and things that are a little bit harder to do with uh, non-AI approaches. We also see artificial intelligence augmenting lawyers. So there's a lot of tools, there's a growing set of tools out there that, oops, this is the wrong slide. Um, sorry, we have artificial intelligence augmenting lawyers. So uh, we see that artificial intelligence is allowing lawyers to go through lots of documents um, and cut out the mundane work of sifting through lots and lots of data manually and helping lawyers focus on more high value tasks that they are trained for. And we also see that artificial intelligence is helping in basic science. So helping with things like drug discovery, um, and helping researchers and scientists find molecules and compounds that uh, might help in uh, things like uh, having, uh, creating therapeutics or uh, medicines for various different diseases and uh, being able to find those a lot faster than ever before. We also see AI augmenting things like artists. So even creative professions are being aided by AI, which is something that folks may have not anticipated AI helps with, but it does. And here there's a technique called uh, generative adversarial networks that help uh, artists even create interesting pieces uh, that some of which have turned out to be very popular. But this begs the question, what about programmers? And that can artificial intelligence aid programmers? And how? And that's a question that we have been interested in at GitHub as researchers. Now, one key facet of artificial intelligence in machine learning is it's very data hungry. You need lots of data, you need lots of examples to show an algorithm or train an algorithm on how to understand a domain like programming. So this is why GitHub released Code Search Net. Code search net is a large corpus of, of data, and it's essentially 
code and comment pairs. So there's 2 million code and comment pairs pulled from various GitHub repositories, cleaned and curated. And um, what, that, what that is, is a treasure trove of data for researchers to then use for various artificial intelligence and machine learning tasks. So, so well, not only is it the data, but it's, there's also some other things that I'll talk about in a moment. But this gives you a breakdown. Various languages have been uh, represented in this data. Go, Java, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, so on and so forth. Um, and we can see there's a lot of diversity in here for researchers to dive into. So in addition to the data, we also provided benchmarks and reference models. And one task that we propose is search. So given a natural language description of some kind of code, the, the task is that we propose is, can you find code that does that? And to do that in a very semantic way, so not keyword search. So you can imagine this case that is illustrated on this slide. Let's say you're trying to find code that pings a REST API and returns results. But suppose the code doesn't contain any of those keywords at all. The code doesn't contain the words ping or REST or API. So how would you find that code if you didn't know, if you're not familiar with the syntax or just new to a project? So what this is meant to illustrate is AI can help with tasks like this, semantic search of code. And this is uh, one of the references provided by Codes, Code SearchNet. So Code SearchNet is a competition where people entered and competed on this task. But it's also a data set. And that data set, you can find more information on GitHub at github slash code search net, where the reference models and the data set are hosted. But I don't want to spend too much time on that. Um, what I want to, I really want to hand it off to Rock, who is one of our top participants in code search net, who, in my opinion, made the most interesting uh, thing out of code search net. And I want to hand it over to him so he can tell you more. Um, thank you. Rock, Howell. I'll give it to you. Thank you, Hamel. Um, hi, my name is Rock, and today I would like to present Code Snippet Search. It is a web application and a web extension that allows you to search GitHub repositories and uh, GitHub repositories using natural language queries and code itself. So, next slide. Hamel, next slide. Um, so code search for me at least is one of the most important tools during coding. Uh, I noticed that searching and navigating through code heavily outweighs the actual coding. So when I'm already familiar with the code base, I find that exact search is what I need. For example, regular expressions and case insensitive search. That is because I'm already familiar with the naming scheme and I can reasonably predict uh, how to formulate a search query. And every ID and code editor is already equipped with it. But when I'm not familiar with the code base or even a new folder within an existing large project, it makes searching more difficult because it's more trial and error. A tool like Code Snippet Search would allow me to easily explore unfamiliar code focusing on the semantics without getting bogged down in the syntax. For example, this is especially useful when onboarding a new developer onto a project because it can be a significant boost to their productivity. Outside of a work environment, we encounter unfamiliar code in the form of GitHub repositories. Semantic search tools would provide a faster way for users to find answers to their issues directly in the code. Consequently, it would lessen the burden on maintainers to provide these answers. Um, next slide, please. To give a short example, let's say I'm a new developer at a company and I get a ticket to implement an API endpoint that fetches products and their shipping information. Additionally, I want to implement as much as possible on my own. Traditionally, I would start searching and going through all classes and functions that mention products or shipping. Depending on the size of the code base, that may be a lot of code to go through. There really is no go good way to automatically narrow down the search results until you get more familiar with the code base. And you only get more familiar if you work with it for long enough. So this leads to a bootstrap problem that all developers eventually overcome. To shorten the bootstrap time, I would rather enter a few general queries that automatically surface the best possible results. So in our case here, I would enter get all products, get shipping info for product, and paginate API response. I would expect to get product and shipping info classes, for example, if we're programming in an object-oriented language, 
and some functions dealing with SQL and retrieving the entities from the database. I may be a bit stretching with this example, but hopefully you get the overall point. So next slide, please. So let's move on to the demo, or rather some screenshots of the demo. First, we'll check out the web application located at codesnippetsearch.net. On the first page, we see a list of supported repositories with their descriptions and the supported languages. Now we need to select a repository to search, and since Django powers the backend of this project, it seems like a good place to start. Next, next slide, please. Um, so let's say we wanted to know how to get a database table name in Django. Uh, we get back a list of code snippets, each one containing a link to the GitHub file, match rating, similar code snippets, and syntax highlighted code. Everything except the match rating and the similar code snippets link should be pretty self-explanatory. We'll go over the similar code snippets later on. The match rating is calculated from the vector distance between the query and the snippet. So higher the match rating, the closer the query and the snippet. This is a little foreshadowing into how code snippet search works under the hood. In this case, we didn't get the exact answer we were searching for, but looking at the first snippet, I think we could make it work with a bit of tweaking. Next slide, please. To showcase the similar code snippets option, let's say we wanted to know how to convert a time zone to a local daytime. By clicking on the similar code snippets link, code snippet search will look for other code snippets that best match the selected one. As we can anticipate, we'll get a lot of time zone converting functions. This is great for exploring the code base and similar functionality. Next slide, please. OK, so let's move on to the web extension. Web extension can be used directly on the GitHub repository. I'll be using the PyTorch repository as an example because I'm using it to implement the neural networks within code snippet search. The web extension is implemented in the form of a sidebar that is opened by pressing Alt, Shift, and S. There, you can search by entering a query or a code snippet. Next slide. Uh, so if I was interested in one-dimensional convolution in PyTorch, I can enter the query in the sidebar. The search results have the same format as on, as on the web application, but they are more accessible through the sidebar. Next slide, please. A convenient way of searching by code is selecting a code snippet, right-clicking, and selecting the search by code option. With the search by code option, you can search using any arbitrary code snippet, and the most similar snippets from the repository will be returned. This could be repurposed into detecting duplicate code in pull requests as an automated check, or even as an offline tool to help us while developing. Next slide, please. The main data source and inspiration for code snippet search is, of course, the Code Search Net project. It provides various baseline implementations of neural code search and TensorFlow. They range from simpler ones like bag of words to the ones using state-of-the-art techniques like self-attention. My implementation was inspired by their neural bag of words baseline implementation because it was performing the best overall. Initially, I had written code snippet search in Keras and was able to search through the code search net corpus. The Keras models became really unwieldy to work with due to the specific structure of the neural networks. It also did not play, play nice when developing the app together with Django, so I had to look for alternatives. I decided to switch to PyTorch when I wanted to add support for searching GitHub repositories because the model code became really simplified and there were no issues when developing and deploying the Django app. Next slide, please. So code snippet search works by using joint embeddings of code and queries to implement a neural search system. The training objective is to map code and corresponding queries onto vectors that are similar to each other. There are multiple ways to measure similarity between vectors, but I'm using cosine similarity throughout. With a trained model, I can embed a natural language query and then, and then use nearest neighbor search to return a set of closest code snippets. During training, I use function doc strings as approximations of natural language queries. Next slide, please. So here, here is just a uh, simple visual representations of these visual of these um, embeddings that we're we're trying to learn by training the models. Next slide, please. And in this image, I have the entire model split up into layers. First is the input layer. One input is for queries, and one input each for languages. Inputs are forwarded into embedding layers with job out applied afterward. The magic happens in the encoding and pooling layer. Here I take the simplest, but in this case, the most effective way of encoding the tokens using a weighted mean. The weights I use for weighting are learned in a separate trainable layer. 
Since we split up the languages at the input, we have to concatenate them back in the same order as they appear in the queries. Finally, I normalize the rows in both matrices and multiply them to get cosine similarities. The last function can be intuitively explained as maximizing the similarities between the corresponding code and query pairs while minimizing the similarities between non-corresponding pairs. Okay, and how is the actual searching performed? I take all of the code snippets, I encode them using the trained model and store them in a nearest neighbor search index. When I want to look up the nearest code snippets using a query, I first encode the query and then look for the nearest code snippet. And here we have the training procedure, which is split into two major parts, training the base language models and then training the repository language models with the help of the base models. Both contain roughly the same steps. First, the code and query sequences are pre-processed. For example, the tokens are converted to lowercase and invalid tokens are filtered out. Then we prepare the vocabularies for code and query tokens and we only keep the most frequent ones. With the help of the vocabularies, we encode the tokens into integers that can then be used in the neural network embeddings. All that is left is to train the model and save it. I train the base language models using the code search net corpus first. The main goal of the base language model is to train the word and code token embeddings that can then be transferred to repository models. I'm hoping that the base language model learns general language features that can then be fine-tuned by the repository data. With repositories, I was on my own to extract the corpus. I'm using GitHub's tree sitter to find functions and then tokenize them. Repository models have the exact same structure. I just initialize all embedding layers with base language embeddings. I also want to mention that there are, of course, plenty of warnings attached to the code snippet search model. You need a reasonably large, well-documented repository to train the model. And even then, it only works on functions. So the first next step would be to figure out how to work on smaller chunks of code. For example, a couple of lines of code with a comment above. From a model perspective, I would like to experiment with tree-based models that could potentially capture the information hidden in the abstract syntax tree. But for that, I would need to gather a lot more samples. Next slide, please. And I save a small anecdote for the end, which highlights why reinventing the wheel is sometimes good and perhaps even necessary. As software engineers, we are thought that we, are thought that we should avoid reinventing as much as possible and just use the already proven solution. This is generally good advice that prevents us spending too much time developing unnecessary things. But if you're looking to learn, deepen your knowledge, and have fun while doing it, then reinventing the wheel is a great place to start. That was the main source of motivation for me and why I wanted to join the Code Search Net Challenge. Of course, I could have taken the already implemented baseline models and tinker with them. But my goal was to learn neural networks in depth and actually understand the mechanics behind them. And my re-implementation efforts led me to discover a small bug in the, region, in the original pi baseline pipeline that was causing a big problem with the evaluation. As I've mentioned, I re-implemented the code search net baseline models, including the evaluation part. I used scikit's nearest neighbor search class instead of annoy index, which is a nearest neighbor library used by code search net. I wasn't expecting a good result on the challenge since I wasn't doing anything special. But it turned out I was at the top of the leaderboard, almost doubling the previous best evaluation score. This puzzled me and the organizers as well, so I did some digging. Since I re-implemented the models twice, once in Keras and once in PyTorch, I was fairly confident that my models were close enough to the baseline models. The only thing different in my pipeline was the evaluation. I swapped out the scikit version I had been using for searching with Annoy Index, and my score instantly dropped. It turned out the baseline code search net evaluation code didn't update the size of the annoy index, and the final search index was too small to capture the necessary information. That meant it was returning terrible results. So the lesson is always benchmark the index size if you're using annoy index, and don't be afraid to reinvent the wheel. You just might find yourself giving a talk at GitHub Universe a couple of months later. And that will be all from me. Thank you.